Okay, today I'm going to talk about my great little rug loom my husband made for me. He took hardwood, scrap hardwood, and glued it together and screwed it. This is very heavy. If you have a lightweight wood, you'll probably want to clamp it to a table, but this is so heavy I don't have to worry about clamping. The uh, pegs are six inches long. They're a half inch dowel, and then the quarter inch hole. We put the hole about an inch and a half up. The holes on the loom itself I made at one and a half inch off center. As you can see I have a batch of bags here. So what I do is snap the bags, get them to lay flat, You don't have to worry much about the handles, just you're trying to line up the bottom of the bags. And I'll just do three for time. And you cut along the bottom, and you cut along the top. This is what goes to recycling. And then for the rugs, about six inches, but I just generally go by half of the bag width. And as you can see, I stack bags when I'm ready in whatever color I want to work on. I can pull that up bag out, and I'll use this color, and I'm going to cut it in half. Because I could use bags so many different ways, I store my bags whole and then decide what I'm going to use them for later. So now you have this about six inch wide loop, and you see what you do? You just hand that over and pull it tight. Now when you're making a woven rug, you want these tight and you want the sides even. So what I do is a little trick, is I snap it as I go along. I have the loop, you do this. I snap it flat so I know that this is equal size and then just snap it down. Do it again. Put my hand through, it's ready to go. Snap it, snap it. And you get a nice tight loop and you're guaranteed that you'll be even. Because if the sides are uneven, it fluffs unnaturally when you're going to try to weave your rug. So that's what you do prepare to make a woven rug. And then you just ball it up. I usually do about 10 bags worth or 20 loops if you're going by loops. So I've been saving for a while and I think I've got what I need for this rug. So I've decided to make it three bags long. It's about 50 inches. Try to find the same store because I've tried to make it as even as possible at the end. And I've been working to get my loom all woven up. These are the colors I'm going to go with. Each ball, this has five bags in it. This has ten bags of color and white, and then five, and then these are the colors. Like I said, I save for a while until I get enough to do it. Okay, so these are my pegs. This is an inch and a half down. This is a six inch dowel. And you simply put the bag through the hole and pull it through and then loop it over and put it in your loom. More. Put it through the hole. This one's going to be a little tough. Keep twisting, it'll go right through. And then pull it so it's ready to go. Now we're going to get the loom ready for the bottom. And I have a piece of PVC pipe. And you pinch it and bring this back like this one by one, putting them all on. Now this 
said, I tried to have bags that were even to try to make the tension as even as possible. so it doesn't slide off. And I double check to make sure that everything is nice. And I didn't crisscross any of the strands. And even using the same store brands, See, they're an uneven length, but we can adjust that at the end. Okay. Okay, we're going to start this rug by having an extra length on here, and I'm just going to tie this off temporarily. And you start by wrapping every other one. see you just keep crisscrossing. If you do it wrong, you'll see right away that you're doing it wrong. So you just keep track of how you're weaving it. And when you get to the end of your strand, I like the fact that I have six inch pegs so that I really could put quite a few on before I have to pull it up. There's my next bag of color. And you just continue on. And here you can see my bags are not even. So then you have to stop what you're doing and try to pull a knot apart. And even that out because if you don't, you're going to get some weird puffiness going on in the middle of your rug. And you don't want that because that can cause somebody to trip. And since I pull my knot so tight, this is really a challenge sometimes. Okay, so I want to even that up. And now I'll do that. Okay, back to weaving. And this will probably be the last row. Now when I get to the end, I try to do a couple here, and you'll see why, so I don't lose track of my weave. And this is really tight, so I usually start about here to loosen this up, and you just pull and put your peg back down. You pull it up, I twist a little, and down, and now that these two are flatter, this one is easier. If you do this one first, it'll be really, really tight. So there's my start, and I just continue down the row. Sometimes the pegs fall over, pull it up a little bit more. I've 
forgotten to where my weave is, and so I don't lose track, I'm going to put a couple more so I know which direction I was going. And I'll finish that later. Now I can finish this row and not lose track of anything. Sometimes this end gets snagged on the knot as it goes down the thing. So you just keep track of that one. Okay, so now we're there, and so far we've woven this much. And remember where I just put that through, I'm just going to push that down and continue with the weaving. And I'm out of this strand of the 10 bags, ready to add the next strand of five, my divider colors. There again, if I pull that there, I know I've got that centered. And stop it there for a minute and pull it up. I found that plastic really is smooth and it's fairly easy to pull this up through and it really makes a nice puffy design. Okay, I'm here where I left off and I don't want to mess up my weave so I'll just put that down. There we go. You need to pull these up through. Okay, and this is what the rug is starting to look like. And I'm going to continue to weave and we'll pick this up when I have a lot more on. I'm about halfway through. I finally hit the end of the repeat pattern. I'm starting back on the gray and white, and I thought I'd show you that uh, it gets a little trickier, but not that much. Just keep pulling. Like I said, the plastic bags are smooth. So they tend to pull through pretty nicely. So the more you have doesn't necessarily mean that it's harder to do. If you look at the bottom as I pull, they continue to feed up through as I go along. And I'm not getting a lot of resistance to it. Occasionally you'll feel a flutter when you hit a knot that's pulling through. The only time the knots really seem to be an issue is right along the edge because the edge is a foldover and it's not quite as wide. So there's a little more tension on the edge. And here I'm getting hung up somewhere along here. I could feel it. So I'll put that peg down and find out where it is. All you do is pull it down and right here is where it's getting hung up. Right there. And it just got hung up on that knot. But as you can see, it's all fixed. And that's about the only thing you'll encounter as you get longer. So, I finished the pattern. This is the last of the pattern. And I'm almost done. And this is really tight. But I want to finish this edge 
and add a little bit more gray up here to make sure that it stays tight. So now we're going to start about talk about finishing a rug. So I come down here to the end and take my rubber band off. And I start pulling this over. And basically, get this and this. So I'm going to loop that one through, pull the next one, loop that one through. And as you can see, we're adding quite a bit of length by doing it this way. That's why I wanted to add up at the top a couple more rows of gray to tighten this up. hold of my pipe. That's why I'm doing it one-handedly. Two more. And set my pipe down. And I'm going to just temporarily tie this off until I shunk it down here. to make this look as pretty as possible. And when they're uneven, you have to do that. That looks pretty nice. And so I think I'll just finish this off and tie this up. And work that through. And this can go under here. And leave it in. Okay, that's pretty tight. Okay, as you can see, we have this excess. I'm just going to continue to pull this down. And since this is lined, you can see that you're doing it fairly evenly. As you get closer to the top, it's much tighter because you've been pushing it down from there. And this is about as much excess as I have right now, and I'm going to just add enough gray. I'll throw the pattern slightly off, but not really enough to be noticeable. Get in there. Or not. We only have to cover that much distance. That should give me about enough. yet to do that looping thing that we did at the bottom. So 
Okay, so that's where we're at. Now the trickier part is trying to get these off the bobbin. Like I said, there's an inch and a half that I have to cover. last peg. Okay, so we finished the rugs today, and because of the pattern I made, I could tell you exactly how many bags and everything are here. This rug is 50 inches long, 21 inches wide. We had 14 rows, and there was three bags on each one of those. Each of the color bands had 10 bags, each of the gray bands had five bags. So for the 50 inch by 21 inch rug, I use 200 bags. So if you're thinking about weaving, this is what you get for 200 bags, a 50 by 21 inch rug. And thank you so much for watching.